G'day mates, Home Slice here, and welcome back to Vampire. Uh, in the last episode, I said I would try to reload and get a better dialogue option for this guy, and I did do that, but I cannot get a better dialogue option for him. Uh, there's no sort of manual save, and uh, it just auto-saved, and I can't get anything else. Now... I like that because, you know, the core philosophy of the game is, like, uh, take responsibility for your actions, and it literally says that when you launch the game. Like, that's the core philosophy of the game. But I have a problem with it because what seemed like a pretty arbitrary dialogue choice uh, turned out to be a potentially critical uh hint related to this guy's story uh and i i had no no idea i had no way of knowing that it could be so important and uh so if that pops up in the future then it's gonna suck like the dialogue option seemed like the most logical one to pick uh and it was rejected it seemed like the most logical and sensible one to pick but he didn't didn't like it, but the life running in your veins. This dead flesh needs it. Oh, please spare me, dark. Yeah, we got a um, note here, so let's read it. About the use of garlic and wooden stakes. Dear brothers, I must now draw your attention to a very important point the use of garlic as a protection against vampires. Let's be crystal clear on the subject. Garlic will never protect you against those creatures. No matter how fresh, how strong, and how smelly, garlic is totally useless as a defense. I can never say enough how damaging that novel of Bram Stoker has been. Yes, of course, population of Slavic countries place garlic cloves in coffins. Yes, of course, inhabitants of Santorini Island hang garlic on their windows. There would be so much to write about this place, and someday soon. I hope to go back to the island to further explore its occult tradition, but that is not to protect the living from the devil. It is to tell the dead that they are aware of their malevolence. It is a symbol, nothing more and nothing less. So please, by all means, yes, wear garlic, show garlic, hang garlic, and tell the shadows that you are not afraid. But if you are looking for supernatural protection, you will have to search much deeper into the forgotten secrets of the occult tradition. For here is the truth, my fellow brothers. Garlic does not repel vampire, but all the fresh plants will hurt them. It is as if their body could not stand the presence of botanical uh, elements. I have seen an enraged vault flee when whacked with a rose. Yes, a simple rose. I have witnessed a violent econ or econ fall down and beg for mercy when stuck by a wooden stake. I don't know why it is so effective, and I would give my left arm to find the answer to that mystery. But the truth remains nevertheless. Vampires are very sensitive to fresh herbs, plants, and woods. <sighs> I, I love it how they uh, referenced Bram Stoker in here, because he does, like, some vampire movies or something. And, yeah, I'll, I thought steaks would have some sort of role in the game, but I was wondering about garlic as well. Oh, so they've finished their dialogue, so I'll talk Good to evening, her, her now. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but what? dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is, is she a vampire? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Okay, then. Do you require my services, Miss Howcroft? I have no need for your medicine, Dr. Reed. Blood is the only drug I need. <sighs> Details. Hint locked. All right, well, I don't want to go into the dialogue uh, in I'll case you, I mistress of the dark okay. in case I mess something up. Let's have a walk around and a bit of a talk to this guy too. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. 
How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you on the flint. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. Yeah, he seemed fine to me. I, like Reed said, a bit hysterical or delirious, but that's it, really. Uh, about Tom Watts' situation in the East End docks. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers Trade Union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. We've talked to Clay. That was the guy who was injured outside the hospital, and we had the choice to drain his blood or let him go. That was his name, Clay Cox. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know? The sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint. Not even criminals. Well, good protection, I suppose. What about vampires, though? They wouldn't give a shit, right? Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Corruption? Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. Yep, fair enough. Priests vow and all that. Or I don't know if he's a priest or not, but whatever. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. Yeah, there's a war going no on. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. That's what happens in times of war. The, the normal civilians like him are just left to rot, really. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. Back then anyway, that's how it would have been. There was way less food and all that, but you're a hero or a fool. Why did he abduct, abduct you? Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here, this Miss Hawcroft. Oh, that's that lady. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Okay. Personal stuff. So she really is a vampire, then. If he... Well, maybe not, but... Uh, how do you feel... How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... Sleep, then. Empty. You're in Sleep. good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well-versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. Yeah, good night's sleep should do him good. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks, and I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Are you a priest? Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Why not use your cross? I was about to say, we're standing right next to him, and it's not doing anything to us. But maybe, uh, Swansea's cross is, like, a special one or something. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Yeah. Not mine, anyway. So his is definitely special, then. 
Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really, but I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. Okay, Goodbye, then. Mr. We'll talk again later. Okay, so new bios on Harriet Jones, I think he said. How many other people do we have here? Looks like this is the only one. No, there's another one. That's the the uh, pawnbroker guy. That's that doctor that we have to talk to. Who else? We got another one over here that looks sickly. I believe. Ah, oh, she's in her own room. Okay, we can't get in there. Who else do we have? Anyone else? Oh, there's a f oh god, there's a few out here. God, I need to talk to all of these people. This entire episode could just be dialogue. Like, down, my boy. oh my god, there's so many people. Oh, another letter. My dear children, sorry I did not write you write to you before, but it hurts like hell just to write these few words on bloody paper. Don't worry, Daddy will go out of the hospital as soon as the doc doctors fix his arm. In the meantime, if you need something, go see Mr. Chadwick at the construction site and tell him you are Harvey Fiddick's children. You remember Robert Chadwick, the big guy with the moustache who helped me repair the house doors last spring. Go see him and ask for a few bob. He won't refuse to spare you a few. I'm sorry I can't work anymore for now, but we'll figure out something as soon as I'm out. Don't worry. Everything will be fine as soon as Daddy's arm is strong again. As soon as the doctors have fixed my arm. Uh, this guy? No. This guy then. Okay, well... You always knew the words to calm the children, Helen. What's his story? Evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Wait, he's left-handed then. Because if he's complaining about his arm being hurt and writing the letter, this arm is the only one that's bandaged, so I get, he must be left-handed, right? Tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work. Rent to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Yeah, fair enough. I bet there's more to it, though. Ah, for details. We can mesmerize. Harvey will not be able to feed his family as long as his arm is injured. Healthy. Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? I'm all right. Considering the state of this place, I should consider myself lucky, I guess. Oh, I wanted to do more. Doctors are arguing about your case. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Yeah, I was, I was gonna comment on that, like carpentry is a bit different to uh, humans, but... Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable, and your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Uh, personal questions. You seem worried about your... F this is still white, though. 
but there's nothing. I guess maybe a fourth one comes up. You seem worried about the safety of your family, and it's obviously the reason why your wound troubles you so much. I cannot give up on my children now. They both need me living. What about their mother, if I may ask? She died in 1915 during one of the first Zeppelin raids. Ugh. We never found her body. That's rough. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. Fuck, that's rough. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Yeah, I guess that is better than what happened. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. Are they getting taken care of by, like, other family then? Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Or maybe that guy that was mentioned in the note. Got some more glass vials there. Uh, this is the bad doctor, right? Oh, no, I don't want to talk to you just yet. Oh, God, there's so many people to talk to. Well, uh, where's this thing? Uh, quests. Oh, no, it's investigations, isn't it? Yes, this one. Dr. Corker and Tippett's. Yeah, it's that one. So we'll talk to this guy first to see if we can get any hints. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> what? Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. They are totally the same voice actor. Work, Dr. Reed. Yeah, they are. They totally have the same voice actor. He's just got like a... He, he's changed his voice a bit for this role. Do you need my medical attention, dear colleague? You don't have to worry about me, Dr. Reed. I am here to assist you, not to be a burden. Or he's... He sounds very similar at the very least. Ah, uh, so was this... The guy... Shit, I need to make sure I'm getting the right thing here. Investigate... Interrogate Corcoran Tippett's. Interrogate Gwyneth Brannigan. And this is Strickland. Okay. Oh, all hints for him. Uh, tell me about yourself. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose that career? Oh, your experiments, though. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. Yeah, fair call. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Cool. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. God, if only he knew what would happen roughly 35 years in the future. World War II. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But 
with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Yeah, he does seem quite optimistic, doesn't he? You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Yeah, well, Milton's an asshole, from what we know. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh, no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Yeah, cool. Personal. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Yeah, what is his story? Maybe we'll be able to discover his other hint. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Well, there we go. I wonder what that full story is. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior. A man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones and flesh. Yeah, fair call. Okay, well, let's go... Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Talk to uh, Fiddick again, see what his story is. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Uh, this one. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. Oh. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. How did it happen? How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. What's a double? I don't know what that is. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Okay. Well, that's it for Goodbye that for then. Now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. You always knew the words to calm the children, Ellen. As for me, God damn. There's still so many people to like talk to and so many other things to do. Yeah, got all these people out here still. Are you just sleeping? I guess so. God, so I think we'll talk to those people once we talk to Dorothy. What about you? Oh no, that's the lady in the room that's locked. So let's finally talk to this guy. See what his go Good is. Evening, Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Uh... Yeah, smuggling weapons. I uh, he apparently he's an asshole. So yeah, he runs rackets. Like, why the fuck would you do that? Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know, and by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, doctor. 
I offer them another way to protect their elf. Yeah, sounds very responsible. How is the situation? <sighs> you want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything, and it's getting worse every day. Yeah, and it'll get better by charging patients in the ambulance. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance driver since... Too long, I guess. I'll bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. How's the sanitary situation? Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. It okay. sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing in. I escaped through the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want, but be careful, doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. Well, I've already killed the person in there. He was feral. Tell me why you're extorting money from some of the patients here. If a patient wants a bed, he'll have to pay me a little fee. That's all. Where did you get the idea for such an immoral scam? Funny you should ask. The first time it was from a patient who bribed me to get a bed. It's only then I realized I could make a fortune. Wow, what a fucking asshole. I really don't want to give him his money back, but I feel like it'll like reveal more hints and stuff and we'll be able to do something with him. Hopefully this is the right choice. This is what I mean about the choice system. It, I really don't know like if it could have a bad negative effect. I'll do the medical checkup first before I do it though. Do you need any medical help, Milton? I'm fine, Doc. Physically, at least. But I would give everything to be in a better place right now. Alright, let's do it. I have some good news, Milton. What? The epidemic's over? I retrieved your wallet. With all the money, and a certain picture. Well, yeah, Pippa Hawkins is my girl. So what? Is it the difference of skin colour that bothers you? Not at all. What? Good. Please, take this money anyway. To remind you to keep your mouth shut. Not everybody's as broad-minded as you, Dr. Reed. Oh, well, I guess it is 1918. Where they still care about shit like that. Um, I thought we were going to say that she was dead or something. What's going on between you and Nurse Hawkins? Pippa's tired. Tired of all this shit. Tired of all those corpses piling up. She's as depressed as I am. <sighs> During the war, I witnessed a few couples just like you come together in difficult circumstances. It can be very damaging. Maybe you're right. But we support each other. And that's all that matters. But you extort people for money. In the worst of times when money's so unavailable. You do realize you could both get fired. Hospital staff are not meant to have intimate relationships with one another. Come on, Dr. Reed. Do you know how many rules are broken in this hospital every day just to keep it running? Oh. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing. He's probably right about that, actually. All right, let's trade. What do you have? I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable... Um... Does not look like he has anything useful. I don't have a lot... Well, I've got plenty to sell, but I want to keep all this for crafting. Ah, oh, well. So we need to go talk to... Wait, who's this guy? Okay, that's Corcoran Tippett's. Okay, I'm glad I didn't talk to him then. I thought it was the guy over here that was Tippett's. So, we've talked to him. Let's talk to her. Oh, no, we haven't used her dialogue options yet. Shit, I really don't want to miss anything. There's just so much dialogue. I, I, I personally like it, but it might not mo be the most exciting thing for people to watch. So, where's this... There's... Str no, Strickland is fine, as far as I know. 
but we've got to talk to oh, fuck what was the name this lady Pippa Hawkins where's she I, like I don't know where she is well I'm going to talk to the other doctor here this one and then we'll go talk to the bad Good one. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swanson's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. What? Really? What's his problem? And yeah, this is the Clay Cox guy. That was like the gang leader or whatever. Maybe we should go back and talk to him. Yeah, do you have a problem on with me? Like, what's the go? If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice the benefit of his position but i don't agree with it i know we've never met before but i believe this hospital could use all the help it can get you will agree with that i'm sure oh but i have heard about you dr reed of course you can't say the same about me since i have not wasted my time courting the press <sighs> oh this is gonna be a hint thing Shit. Oh, which one? You better change your tone. Jealousy. I doubt the jealousy thing would work. Fuck, this is totally going to be one of the hint things that I'm talking about. No need for such animosity. I'd probably say... Oh, this one It seems to make the most sense. Like, this is way too aggressive. And this is like... It'll make him feel like shit. If he is, like, I don't know if he's a shit doctor or not, but I think this is the one to go for. I, God, I hope I'm right. This is what I mean about the, the no manual save thing. Like, I, I just get punished for making the wrong dialogue choice when it's not really obvious which one I should go for. And it doesn't have to be obvious. I don't have to have my hand held all the time, but this... It's just a poor way of having the hints available. <sighs> but yeah, I'm going to go for this one and hope it's right. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. Oh, well, it didn't turn out to be a, a, a hint one, but... Yeah, you get the idea. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become misplaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Yeah, that, he seems to, like, have a... He has a bit of a temper, but he has like a genuine care for the patient for the patients. Um, I'll go for, through the white dialogue options before doing the hints. Uh, but yeah, I guess I've proved my value. He seems to be very esteemed and like highly praised by other doctors and stuff. So I still don't get why he doesn't like Jonathan. I don't know what you've heard about me. But I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, 
I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. I, I don't know the background here. So, I don't know which one to go for. I guess... Knowledge is our main weapon. No reason to just f see this again. This is way too aggressive. So I'm gonna go for. I'm. I saved many lives. I don't know if he really did or not. I assume if this is a, a, an option, then he must have saved lives. So let's go for it. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see, that is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. <sighs> he got me there. I don't know. I don't. And what? I said. Be careful. I only. W this is ridiculous. You see? That it's oh, well, right. We can't choose the other ones, right? It seems you have bad memories of your country cells. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something. Yeah, that's about right. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Shit, I'm going to have to pick which one they do, aren't I? <sighs> and it's going to be like, is the traditional way that he wants to do it the right way, or is the new way, like that guy's experiment, the way to do it? Yeah, why do you wish to lead it? Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Yeah, I would go... I I would go for this guy. I... I'd say he seems very trustworthy. And like he does genuinely care. And like he says, you don't want to butcher him for like this new random experimental method. Like, do the test some other way. But I'm going to go for this one. I really hope you're right about this, Dr. Ackroyd. I'm trusting your judgment on this. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Good. I, I like that. In a person. Okay. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. We got a new hint, didn't we? Uh, yeah, we got both of them for that. Yeah, I missed out on the hint on you. Fuck. <sighs> oh, Tippets. He has a fair few things to go through. Where's the other doctor? God, I still have to talk to all these. Like, there's so much dialogue to get through. We're 39 minutes in, almost. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Press E to check the medical status. He has a disease. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Give medicine. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Nice, we gave it to him. Um, I will need to make more of those things, I believe. Oh, just 
kicked my foot. Oh, that dirt. I'm good. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful, I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. <sighs> we've, we've, we've got to find out more, though. It, we'll, we'll go for this one. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. How so? Uh, personal. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. Ah, even after we gave him the medicine, he's still... How painful. So pa I'll let you get some rest, then. Good evening, sir. Okay. Doctor. Maybe she'll have a hint for us. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Yeah. That's what I was meaning earlier when we were talking to that other doctor who had a go at us. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Uh, they seem aggressive, but... I mean, she just... I'd wish for an option that says, oh, you're a caring mother or something like that. Guess we'll go for this one. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes. Thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. Okay. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Ugh, God, posh much. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude. Ah. Uh. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. I share your stupor. So, Milton and Hawkins are... Or Pippa are both in on it then. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. Yeah. Arseholes. Oh, sh all hints. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Okay, we still got a, a few more people to talk to. I'll just uh, dive, dive in deep and we'll have like a super long episode. So you're through here then. Let's talk to you. Good evening, nurse. Good evening, doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. So she's in on it with Milton. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. The Spanish flu won't last forever. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. 
But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? Didn't the Spanish... Isn't the Spanish flu like the highest killer of all of those diseases? Like the Black Death, Black Plague, they may be the same thing. There's a few different names for them. But the bubonic plague, like so many different plagues and like smallpox, measles. Isn't the Spanish flu the number one killer out of all those? I'm not sure. You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. Yeah, I don't like this about the dialogue. Like, this seems a, like a really aggressive option, but then he's just like, oh, you must try and get a hold of yourself in like a, a pretty soft way, and she receives that well. And the, the dialogue's a bit, these, the options, I should say, are a little inconsistent. Which I don't like, but I'll have to just try and do my best with them. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. Yeah. I, I would go with... We might be able to help, like... A, f a fair number of people but it's gonna be a team effort you know across all the places affected by this i'd i think change your attitude is the best one she seems like pessimistic um, or i wouldn't go with this one though because this would be like oh we're so we're so good we're such a good doctor we're up ourselves. but i think this one's the best one i don't like your attitude nurse hawkins pessimism can be as lethal as the epidemic that, in times like th these. That's it. Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Well, yeah, she's, like, with him, so I guess we can get all the details out of her. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Oh, so he's got a bad rep about something. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Well, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned. Milton is not the chatty type. Okay. What else do we have here? You are Mil... We'll go for this one first. Pepper, I know you're very close to Milton Hooks. Yes. Milton Hooks is my man. If you want to report me for that, just feel free, Doctor. I have no intention of reporting you, Nurse Hawkins. But are you aware of the risks? The rules say I won't be allowed to work as a nurse anymore. But here at the Pembroke, we break rules all the time. Is he worth the risk? Hey, I'm no perfect woman, and Milton is not the finest bloke. But we do our best to get by. That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. You do your best to get by by... extorting people for a bed. Like, great. Real good. Milton cheats patients out of their money at this hospital, Pippa. Are you his accomplice? Yes, I am. Is this your definition of being useful? By abusing the sick? Yeah. No. It is my definition of getting out of this useless life once and for all. <sighs> Why do you do it? Why not? Most of the sick who paid for a bed are already dead. Or will be soon. Don't you see the futility of all this? Yeah, that totally justifies it. You put a price on hope. Oh, I like all of these options. Cynicism will not save you. Fuck, I wish I just knew which one's the right one to pick. Oh, I think this is... This is the one. You put a price on hope. This goes against everything you swore to uphold as a nurse. Report me then, Dr. Reed. Report the little nurse and keep on lying about the surgical errors, the wrong dosages and diagnostics that we all covered for the sake of our colleagues. 
yeah, I'm all, I'm working on that right now too, actually, with the other doctor who fucked it up. Whose idea was it? What difference does it make? We did it together, and I'm guilty as charged. Answer my question. It was my idea first, even though Milton would say it was his to protect me. <sighs> Goodbye, Nathan. Fucking hell. What a shit show. What a real shit show. Well, we gotta go talk to Milton again. We don't need to talk to old mate there for a while. God, there's just so much to do. I think this episode might end up going over an hour, but... Be nice to get all of the dialogue out of the way in one episode. That That's me enjoying it, though. I'm, I'm really liking it. Oh, what's this? Due to the influenza, this hospital... Oh, it's full. Please go back... God, that'd be depressing to see if you needed the hospital. So, let's talk to this doctor. Oh my god, there's even more though. Another nurse here. Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he really? Oh. It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised, but I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. Uh, what's with... Everyone loves Dr. Reed, apart from that one doctor. And everything seems to be centered around blood transfusions. But I'm pretty sure this is the nurse that had the bad thing here, yeah. We've got this. Interrogate Gwyneth Brannigan about medical error. Well, I don't have any note, uh, any hints for her. So, which one should I talk to first? I don't know. Uh, what do we got here? Tippett's medical error. <sighs> I'll talk to her first and then go to the other doctor. I want to talk to Milton, though. I'll do that first. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Yeah, let's go talk to old Milton. Here he is. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, doctor. Still trying to save lives? Yes. Yeah, we'll go for this one first. Why do you have such a mediocre reputation among your colleagues, Milton? Fuck them. Nobody knows the horrors I've seen since working here. This city was sick long before the epidemic, Dr. Reed. I know it's a difficult task, but correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not the job you are paid to do? I've seen babies left to die while their brothers were properly fed. Underage girls and boys sold to all manner of perverts. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. We lack words. So excuse me if I don't look on the bright side of life. Why not try and do something about it then? Fuck. Admit it. Nurse Hawkins is more than your lover. She's also your partner in crime. Of course she is. How else could I tell which bed is free? I need to know that. Have you no shame? Don't you see the city is crumbling down? Today, people are ready to pay to get a hospital bed. Tomorrow, we may be fighting for food. Oh, there's another hint. Goodbye, Milton. For him. Well, there's no other thing. I still need to talk to the vampire lady. Good evening, Miss Hancock. I need blood, Doctor. Life in London. You're a vampire. Yeah, I guess we should just ask her. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Describe how you feel. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of pustulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. 
Okay, it's Cotard syndrome. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Halcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefied here, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Wouldn't she be able to detect that we are a vampire too, if she really was a vampire? Like the other lady that we talked to? I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Halcroft? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whatever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. I'm sure that I'm sure you can. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? No, I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. Okay. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Okay, what else do you have? Wrong target, new investigation, yeah. Are they actually investigating her? Those guys? Find out... Well, okay, I guess someone really is... Uh... Spying on her. Who are you really, Miss Halcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's mind, you see? Okay. Uh, all hints. I'll leave you. Okay. We're closing in on the final people here. We've had a super, super long episode. But we're not done just yet. I want to talk to this other doctor who fucked the uh, medical procedure on that guy in the in the morgue. Where is he? Wait, isn't it this one over here? The one. Wait, is he upstairs? No, that's Swansea. That's Milton. Why is this thing here? Oh boy. No, don't want to do that. Um Bring the medicine. What about side quests? There's no side quest here. Yeah, I wanna to talk to this guy, Tippets. I can't f see where he is though. That's Hampton, that's the lady in that room. He was on this, maybe he's went upstairs. Be nice if I could see through like every single wall. That's Swansea again. But we can't go through there. That's to our room. Shit, he, he hasn't vanished, has he? That's Rakesh. I'm pretty sure this is it. Well, apart from Strickland, uh, no, the other bad doctor, but I can't find him. And it seems the, the nurse over here has left as well. So I guess I'll just have to wait around until they come back. Oh no, there she, she is there. But the other one still isn't here. Well, let's talk to her anyway. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Yeah, we'll definitely go over an hour now, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice. How are things here? Not good, to say the least. We're struggling against an invisible enemy, more lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Doctor. 
Well, she's talking about the epidemic, Jonathan God. An invisible enemy. Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here, and we're trying to hold fast, but... How do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. <sighs> oh, yeah, it is pretty bad. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Uh, anyone that's... Now speak up. Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Oh, yeah, that... Sure, that makes it right. That justifies it. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Okay. Well, that's the old boy. We still need to talk, talk to him. But I still need to get information out of them. Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? <sighs> I don't know, man. Like, I do understand why she did it, but, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. You took a great risk. God. To clear Dr. Tippett's name must be the decision of Dr. Swansea. You can't take matters into your own hands. I respect Dr. Swansea's authority and management, but he's no idea what happens here on a daily basis. I did what I had to do. Uh, well... Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Pretty sure he's the last one we need to talk to now. There he is out there. What, what's he doing all the way over here? Then we need to talk to Dorothy. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before, at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. Oh, God. Morals, man. Why do they have to be so hard sometimes just just by that first initiation of dialogue there you can sort of get the idea that he has good intentions like to help people and he seems to care but he he fucked up and he killed someone <sighs> yeah what's tell me about the staff what can you tell me about the staff in the hospital some are really good and others are not so good but during this troubled period there is no time for slander i prefer to focus on the positive character traits <sighs> so the exact same cop-out answer as the other lady any opinion about the management i don't always agree with dr swansea's reserve but i must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis ah yes the burden of command I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. 
positive characters. Tell me more about cherished people then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. What? Did you have to be a man to be a practitioner back in those days? I don't know. But sh he's only saying that because she covered up for him and hid his error. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. People are more important. I didn't have much... Yeah, people are far more, more important. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. You're exhausted. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Yeah, it's what I mean. Like, he seems to have good intentions, but, like, he's struggling to keep his balance here. You have nothing to prove, Nurse... Oh. They're all good options. His attitude is irresponsible because he could have more fuck-ups like he did. And he seems to be an esteemed doctor already, but he seems to have, like, quite the connection to Nurse Brannigan, so I'm gonna go for this one. Nurse Brannigan is worried about you, Doctor. <laughs> she should not have told you that. I will have a word with her. You don't have to blame her <sighs> for her honesty. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. Yeah, that's what I meant. <sighs> Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. Nature of the mistake. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Who was he? Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks, maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. God, it just makes it even worse. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. Oh, well, we've got to go. I'll cover for... No! Oh, I hate these types of choices. I'm going to go talk to... Goodbye, Doctor. ...the nurse again. Fucking hell. God, that does my head in. They, those sorts of choices, like... God... Oh, now she's moved again, though. Fuck. Where have you went? Oh. Nowhere to be seen, apparently. Maybe you went out here for a smoke. Yep, here she is. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Tippett praises you. Why does Dr. Tippett's claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett's does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? <laughs> you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge. I really hope he doesn't. Fuck it, I'm just going to cover the error. Screw it. I've decided that I won't reveal Dr. Tippett's, shall we say, misdemeanor. I'm so glad you share my point of view. 
Dr. Tippetts is a brilliant practitioner. We most definitely need his know-how. I hope you're right. This is a huge risk we're taking. Dr. Tippetts must regain his confidence. Please, keep this decision between you and me. He doesn't need to know you found out. I, I've already... I've already told him. Goodbye now. Oh, God, I feel like I'm just going to end up making all the wrong choices. There's... Oh, you're Pippa, and... Well, I still... Oh, you're Clay. Good evening. Doctor... And why? People who don't... Oh, he's back to normal? Oh, what do you got to say? You're Clay Cox, yeah. Do you ever think about that poor fellow I saw you push in the water? The wound he gave me will make sure I don't forget him. Still fucking hurts. But I should cut me good. Did he want revenge? What did he want? Revenge? I recently had to kill his brother. Poor arsehole thought it would be easy to return the favor. <sighs> well, I probably should have killed this guy. You're a monster, Mr. Cox. An ungrateful and disgusting man. I'm the toughest bastard you'll ever meet, Dr. Reed. And I don't give a fuck what you think of me. That man was determined to murder you. You almost died. What a surprise. The first time I met him, he nearly shit himself. Fucking coward. Oh, I guess revenge gives you balls. Yeah, I sort of wish I killed this guy now. How is your hospitalization going, Mr. Cox? This is a shitty place with shitty staff. But as long as I'm treated all right, I'll be fine. What's wrong with the staff? What's wrong? With the Pembroke staff. That bastard you sent to bring me here, Milton. I thought he was going to break all my bones before I reached my bed. I see. Any other smart comments? The nurses aren't too ugly. Especially that foxy one, Nurse Crane. Pretty brunette, tough attitude, oh, I like that. What about the hospital? What's wrong with the hospital? Come on, Dr. Reed. The place is a dump. Smelly, sad and dirty. But you're alive thanks to the efforts and dedication of the staff here, aren't you? What are you expecting, a medal? I thought that saving lives was just part of the job. Must be an unsatisfactory profession at this time, I'm sure. God, what an asshole. How long do you think you can escape the law, Clay? I know this city like the back of my hand, Doc. I know its streets, who to pay, who to avoid, and who to bully. I won't get caught. Justice will find you. Prepare to die soon. The police may be slow, but they will find you eventually. Well, how come you didn't turn me in then? Nah, Doc, I figure you have something to hide. Oh, fuck. See... Oh, this is what I mean about the dialogue. How was I ever supposed to know that that was going to fail me a hint? So now this is completely lost to me for the rest of the game. That's so frustrating. I'll leave you. But there's, I, I can't reload the game. There's no, there's no reload save option. There's nothing I can do to get that back now. Unless there are, like, save files of every certain specific point, like, ever in the game. Ah, oh, that's so dumb. How was I supposed to know that that would have such a massive... Evening, a potentially massive... effect on the game? I really Good hope th that choice doesn't matter, but... That's still very frustrating. And it shouldn't be like that. But this one has dragged on for way too long as it is. But I think we've finally got a lo very large chunk of the dialogue out of the way for this area at least. And hopefully the future ones have like more action and more uh, like story development. Like main story development. Uh, but yes, apologies if you don't like the super long episode, but I 
felt like it was necessary to get the dialogue, well, a lot of the dialogue out of the way. Down, so I guess I'll end this one here anyway, and we'll talk to Dorothy and get started again in the next episode. Peace in the Middle East, and may all your games be good ones.